Now that we have a good grasp of Hadoop, we understand how MapReduce works, we know how the HDFS file structure works, and we can move data from our local machine into HDFS and then query some of that data just using some of the simple ls commands and the other HDFS DFS commands. Now let's turn our focus to Hunk, and specifically what we can do with Hunk and how it's going to help us with HDFS. So what exactly is Hunk and where did the name come from? It's basically just Hadoop and Splunk put together, and that gives us Hunk. And it's a platform that comes from Splunk, and what it's going to do is going to say, hey, it gives us the ability to take data that we have inside of Splunk and either archive it out to HDFS, or it gives us the option to pull data models that aren't in Splunk that are traditionally maybe some human-generated data, maybe some weather data like we talked about, and you can pull that data and use it in Splunk and overlay some other different data models. So it's really about taking that data analytics platform and kind of evolving it too. Well, we're not just looking at just machine data, we're actually able to look at any kind of data. So we're actually talking about becoming a full data analytics platform and extending it out to HDFS and the Hadoop community. So there are some differences between how Splunk Enterprise works and how Hunk works. And so let's talk about some of those key features. So just like Splunk, it's a licensed feature, which means that you're gonna to have to pay to enable it. So it's not open source, it's not like HDFS and the other ones, it's more traditional in the sense of Enterprise Splunk. And so these pricing models, they're actually different than the Enterprise Splunk. And so you're going to have to actually work with the Splunk representatives and engineers to find out how much that license fee would actually be. The general rule of thumb for how that works is that license fee is going to be based on the number of task trackers in your Hadoop environment. And that's something that's really going to vary on how much data you have, how big your Hadoop instance is. And that's why it's good to work with Splunk on trying to get that sized correctly for your environment. Just like the Splunk Enterprise, Hunk offers a cloud-enabled model. This one's a little bit different, but this one is going to allow you to use Hunk in a third-party cloud provider. Right now, the only one that's certified is going to be the Amazon EC2. But as the popularity is growing for Hadoop for sure and for Splunk as well, those options are going to probably expand. But as of right now, it's only offered with Amazon's EC2. With the visualizations, this is where Splunk actually is excelling really well, and this is why the offering for Hunk has been so popular, because it provides some of the same visualizations that are easier to use than, say, in the Hadoop environment. The same tools that you've been using for visualizations in Splunk are going to be offered to you in Hunk as well. So you can still continue to use the, some of the same tools to analyze different data. And then the security features as well. So remember, we have the security feature with Splunk Enterprise when we were using forwarding to encrypt that in-flight data. Same thing here with Hunk. You can still encrypt that data, and you can still manage those users from Splunk. So you can still regulate who gets to see what data. And a big one if you're coming from the Hadoop environment is it's Yarn enabled. And Yarn is a resource manager used specifically with the Hortonworks platform and some of the other open source ones. And so just know that it's Yarn enabled and licensed and featured. And so now that we're talking about some of the Hadoop integration, let's take a look at all the platforms that Hunk is certified to run with. One of the things that we talked about but we didn't really look at was there is an Apache Hadoop open source project out there, and that's what Cloudera and Hortonworks both use in their sandbox. But you can actually go and you can download just the regular Hadoop environment. It's a little more build your own, and there's a lot of features and a lot of tools that aren't included with it, just like Pig and Hive and HBase and some of the other ones. And that's why I normally recommend going with a Hortonworks platform or going with a Cloudera. But just know that with the basic Apache Hadoop, you can use Hunk with that, and so that is certified as well. Just talked about the Yarn integration. You know that Hortonworks is certified with Hunk. We're going to walk through setting up a hunk to work with Hortonworks and that yarn enabled integration is one of the things that I mentioned and that's going to be what's different than the Cloudera version. But just know that Hortonworks is certified to work with hunk. MapR is another platform that we didn't really go into but it's in the sense of open source where Hortonworks is full open source. Cloudera is mainly open source but there are some licensed features that aren't open sourced. MapR is totally closed system so when you all of their tools are proprietary and they're paid to license. But if you use MapR in your environment, it is certified to work with Hunk as well. Pivotal HD is similar to the Hortonworks platform. A lot of open source tools there. Hunk is certified to work with it. And then Cloudera, of course, we had talked about it. But one of the things that I want to mention is if you're using Cloudera and you're trying to enable Hunk, it is certified, but it's going to be different than the path that we're going to go down because Cloudera doesn't use Yarn. So there are some differences there, but it's very popular 
runs really well and is certified. And then like we were talking about the cloud options. So Amazon's EMR, which is their big data platform that's certified to work with Hunk as well. So now let's walk into a demo where we're going to find out where we can download Hunk. And then we're going to go through and install Hunk in our Hortonworks environment. Now let's get hands on with Hunk. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to install Hunk on our Hortonworks sandbox. And remember, we said this is different than our Splunk Enterprise, so there's a different download for it. So we'll walk through and do that. Once we get that tarred package, we'll actually just do the install on the Hortonworks sandbox. Should be fairly simple and straightforward. So let's jump back into your web browser and find where to get Hunk. So we'll go back to the Splunk.com website. And if we go to products, we'll come down to the core products and you can see Hunk. And there's some information here about Hunk, but you should be able to see a download button. And what I'll do is I'll just click the download. The only option right now is for Linux, which works perfectly because that's what our Hortonworks sandbox is installed on and Cloudera's version two, if that's what you're using. We'll want to download it. I'm going to download the TGZ and I would encourage you to do that if you're following along, but you can also download the RPM if you would like. It'll take a few minutes. It's a pretty big download. You might have to put your account information back in if it's not already cached. Once you get that downloaded from the Splunk website, you will want to move it to your temp directory. I've already moved it to my temp directory here. You can see we have it in the temp directory as Splunk-6.4.3 and a long extension .tgz. And so now what we're going to do is we're just going to walk through a couple steps of just installing our Hunk environment. And it's going to be similar to what we were doing with the forwarding. And then after we get everything set up, we're actually going to start looking at some of our data. So the setup's pretty straightforward. We want to use our sudo command run a tar xf on that Splunk directory. And it'll take a few minutes to install because we're installing the whole hunk environment. Just remember to use that sudo so that you have the privileges. After that's done, we'll want to start up that Splunk instance. And so if you remember now, all we need to do is we just need to start our Splunk. And so, and that's just using that Splunk four slash bin, four slash Splunk start. And then remember, we're going to have to accept the license as well. One of the things that we'll want to do is we'll actually want to change our port because now we're installing this in the Hortonworks sandbox. The 8000 is actually being used by our instance of Hue. And so we'll want to say, yes, we want to change the port. And then we'll just do 8081. And you will get a message saying that, hey, those ports are open. You should be good to go. And it'll give you your address so that you can go ahead and start logging into the Splunk interface. And so you want to switch back to your web browser. And now we should log back into our Hortonworks sandbox. Make sure that we're specifying the 8081 port that we configured, or if you configured a different port, use that one. It's just like logging in for the first time with the Splunk Enterprise. You can see that it's just the username is admin and then the password is change me. And you'll want to change those after we log in. And then after you change your password, everything should be up and running. And you can see that this looks very familiar. This is our Splunk instance, except for this is running in our Hortonworks sandbox. And in our next demo, we're actually going to try to move that weather data into Splunk and be able to analyze it.